Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not going to crack the same joke a second time in a row. You already know we're in the retro rebound room, or at least that's what I like to call it. Someone cracked a joke last time I was in here and said, I'm just in the same room, but I hang up this thing behind me. I understand how it looks. I swear to God, this is a different room. Anyway, for those who didn't see it, we posted a video a couple of weeks ago titled Why You Need to Play Fallout 3 in 2022, and it was a more nostalgic-themed video, very similar to what we do over on Retro Rebound, and I like to bring that energy over here where I can because I am a very uh, nostalgic individual. We're talking about Star Wars games over there right now, and we just love to open complete box games and reminisce, and I thought with Starfield's reveal coming up with the Xbox Bethesda Game Showcase, I was feeling a little Xbox news fatigue. It's been a lot these last couple of weeks. I don't mind that, but I want to always keep things diverse and interesting for all of you. Uh, it's important for me as a creator. It's why I love doing Retro Rebound because we can be as diverse as we want there. So I wanted to switch it up again and hopefully continue to do this throughout the year with Bethesda Game Studios games in anticipation of Starfield. So games like Oblivion, Skyrim, Morrowind, so on and so forth. I'd like to go back and talk about and reminisce with all of you here on Mr. Matty Plays. And again, not to self-plug too hard, but if you like these type of videos, we do a lot of this stuff over on Retro Rebound. So go ahead and check it out. Link in the description down below. Today, however, we're talking about the other Fallout game, which is, while not a Bethesda Game Studios game, it has that spirit. Just for a lot of people better writing, better choices. You've heard it probably before. We're going to talk about Fallout New Vegas. And I'm holding what is considered a crime. I'm committing a crime right now. I don't know how you could hold a crime, but I'm committing one because I'm holding a PS3 copy of a Fallout game, Fallout New Vegas specifically. As always, I like to go through the complete box copy to kind of think back to it's 2010. You're excited for the next big Fallout game, not knowing that you're not going to get another mainline one for another five years. And after that, the next one's going to be an online game. You're going to hate your life. So you got Fallout New Vegas, you pick it up and this is what you would get. So the back of the box, says, welcome to Vegas, New Vegas. As you battle your way across the heat-blasted Mojave wasteland to the neon-drenched Vegas Strip, you'll be introduced to a colorful cast of characters, factions, special weapons, mutated creatures, and much more. Choose sides in the upcoming war or declare winner takes all in this follow-up to the 2008 video game of the year, Fallout 3, where it says, feel the heat in New Vegas. I can't help it. Anytime I hear feel the heat, I think of Kingdom Hearts 2 with Hades, like you said, feel the heat. Anyway. Experience the Great Southwest as could only be imagined in Fallout. Up the ante with new features, weapons, factions, and foes that await you in Sin City. And let it ride in a huge open world you can explore, choose size, or go it alone. Peacemaker or hard case, house rules, or the wild card. It's all how you play the game. Indeed it is. You open the box. Here you got the disc. You got this beautiful manual. We'll page through. But I also thought this was kind of cool. This little slip that we've got here for the classic pack. Remember this one? I don't remember was this like controversial or not but this would come with copies of the game you'd throw it in you'd get the vault 13 canteen which i didn't really appreciate much at the time because when it came out i had not played fallout 1 but now it's just always popping up on your hud even when you're playing in the normal difficulty it's like you take a sip out of your vault 13 canteen i'm like i remember when i was younger this came out when i was in high school i was like what does that mean why is my character drinking little did i know and we'll talk about it in this video Hardcore mode had something to say about that. You got the weathered 10 millimeter pistol, which was key, and then five stim packs. Nothing crazy there, but it was cool to have there. And especially now knowing the legacy Obsidian has and the talent that worked over Obsidian was also a part of the founding of the actual Fallout franchise. It was cool that the title of it was the classic pack. Now, what I always love to do over on Retro Rebound and just in general is go through the manuals because manuals have a lot of personality if done properly and this is one of those that's kind of like a dirtied up handbook i actually never paged through this because after fallout 3 i was like i don't really need to go through a manual for another mainline fallout game but i was just relatively pleased with the style and all the mechanics they explained you know the reputation system what happens when you commit a crime inside new vegas what exactly happens in dialogue it's just highlights how complex this rpg is it tells you about gambling i don't know if there's actually an explanation for oh there is caravan there we go look how long that is almost two full pages for caravan which for a lot of people they still don't even know how to play that but that was one of the best parts about new vegas as i learned more about it uh, they go through the options preferences 
and all that good stuff. So this is what you get when you pull the copy off the shelf in 2010 for Fallout New Vegas. You may be wondering, why does your boy have a PS3 copy? Uh, it was genuinely because um, it's platinum trophies. I like platinum trophies more than 360 achievements. Xbox, a reminder, overhaul your friggin' achievement system for the love of God. Anyway, let's talk about Fallout New Vegas, why you need to play it this year in this retrospective style video. For me, going back to it, uh, I reinvigorated my love for this game through the Steam Deck. So I was lucky to have my Steam Deck come in the mail, and I'm hoping sometime within the next week or two. I want to spend a lot of time with it since we're already late. It's just going to be kind of a passion project for me. But I do want to talk about the Steam Deck individually in a video. But what's been really cool about the device, as you'll hear me talk about in a future video, is rediscovering these old games and playing them in new ways it's why i love handheld gaming it goes all the way back to something like this it's funny that these two games are right here in front of me but we have the episode 3 video games and the ps2 version is completely different from this pixel art 2d side scroller version on the ds and i prefer this ds version but what would happen back then is i would double dip on games because they were similar experiences in spirit but they were actually different video games and now you're kind of getting that feeling with the Steam Deck where it's like, well, yeah, I've played New Vegas on the PS3, the 360 when it came out. I played it on PC. I modded the hell out of it. I did hardcore mode. I played it on my next-gen consoles. Now, okay, I get to play in handheld. Now, while this isn't a full dissection of the game itself and more of a retrospective, I do want to just focus on some of the features in this game that I really do like and cherish and this is coming from someone who is very pro Fallout 3 I do let it be known I do like Fallout 3 more in New Vegas um you know for me with Fallout New Vegas I think it was hardcore mode that really made me fall in love with this game and it's funny because a lot of people don't know this about me but when New Vegas first came out I hated this game man I did not like it I thought the wasteland was boring I still find that the wasteland is a little in its vanilla state little lackluster i know all of us have modded the hell out of new vegas myself included where we kind of forget what the vanilla game is like but i will never shake off that feeling when new vegas first dropped of it's not more fallout 3 it's like to me a, a less interesting fallout 3 and mind you again as i said earlier i was in high school so when i was playing it i, I didn't get to appreciate the more deep aspects of the game like the writing the choice and consequence that I think really defines me as a gamer today. So interestingly, hardcore mode was the turning point for me because what I loved more than anything about the current Fallout games, and honestly still do, I wouldn't say above writing, but it's right there next to it, is exploration. I really appreciated how Bethesda Game Studios still to this day, even in Fallout 76, handles exploration. And I felt like with Fallout New Vegas, there was too many times I was entering certain areas and they felt useless. There was a bed, a couple pieces of food, a magazine which gave you a temporary buff and i'm like why would i want any of this like i want to see rare and unique weapons i want to see storylines that develop inside these locations i'm exploring and i want more of them and i felt like too often i was just stumbling upon like raul's shack right i talk about that one all the time but there's many locations like raul's shack but what happened was i i fired up a hardcore playthrough in 2014 so it took me that long to come around to the game and suddenly something changed. I, I really appreciated the game on a mechanical level because then I realized how well thought out the world was. You know, of course there were those locations I was looking for that you could explore, but now in hardcore mode, they felt more dangerous. To me, the wasteland in this, even though everyone's dead, it felt more alive than ever before because I was just very aware of my surroundings, crawling through carefully. One thing New Vegas did well was a lot of random encounters, dynamic encounters. You know, of course, factions that don't like you based off the reputation system approaching you. And especially in hardcore mode, I'm like, oh God, please don't shoot me now. No, I don't have anything to fight with right now. I, I'm out of ammo. I'm, my character's loaded up in the inventory. Please don't do this. So yeah, there was a lot of intensity in the open world and it made it where I found a Raul shack and I was like, yes, food, a bed, some place to just not feel so tense. That's what got me through the door on Fallout New Vegas, funny enough, right? It's amazing again, because it's not what you typically hear me talk about in these RPGs nowadays, which is like, oh, I, I love the writing, I love the choice and consequence, I love the agency you have. Of course, my tastes have developed as all of ours have, but it's funny to know that Really, it was the hardcore mode that was the turning point for me. Beyond that, it was then appreciating the, the little things in between, right? I've never been that type of person to spend hours in mini games, in video games. I think of a few like Gwent, 
Pazak. I love card games, so it's pretty easy to get me on those. Like, I'm a huge fan of the Dragon Ball Super card game. I play MTG Arena, so it's really easy to get me on these types of card games. It, just something with my brain, it clicks there pretty well. And when I got to Caravan, it was this interesting obstacle of like, huh, this, I don't really understand this. And learning through trial and error, it did feel like a, for lack of a better term, true card game, right? Where I've never picked up, like I just mentioned two I play, I've never picked up Dragon Ball or picked up Magic Gathering. It was instantly familiar with it, kind of like Pazak, where there was a general set of simple rules, but I was able to turn a corner really fast on it. With Fallout New Vegas, it was really a moment of like going in and kind of feeling like MTG where I was just trying to learn through trial and error. And I really liked that. It was amazing to have this game that had all of the role-playing systems that were similar to Fallout 3, but at the same time, you managed to have these side activities that felt equally as deep. And it's one thing I mentioned in a video about half a year ago at this point in time that I do appreciate about New Vegas and I think it's a very unique game is Without Fallout 3, it could not have existed. What I mean by that is a lot of the systems that Bethesda Game Studios built for the Fallout franchise were literally handed to Obsidian. So they just had to write stories and make content because a lot of it was there. Of course, they had to make new assets. I'm not going to dumb down their efforts. But there's a reason why New Vegas took about a year and a half to make. And a lot of people look at it. And I remember like interviewing people like Chris Avalone and talking to people at Obsidian. They always say like, yeah, the timeline wasn't bad for us at all. Like getting this game out in a year and a half wasn't a struggle at all. And again, it's because a lot of the stuff that was required to make this game work that would have added in the extra probably two years, like developing the systems was already there. But it's really a game of what they added to refine the Fallout 3 formula and make it what was a truly greatest of all time RPG. I love the reputation system. Uh, I thought it was kind of what Karma needed, right? Where Karma, you could just farm by like giving some homeless guy outside of Rivet City water and you could be this angel of the wasteland and everyone would treat you like a god because you did this thing over and over. It broke your immersion, right? Where reputation felt more reactive based off interaction. And because of those dynamic encounters I talked about earlier, you would have those moments where you're like, oh, who are you? Oh, NCR Ranger, you don't like what I did to your friend over there, huh? This is a warning? Okay, noted, right? And it plays a factor in the main story. It felt cohesive. And again, it helps that it was built off the back of Fallout 3, but to me, it was that system that made me fall in love as a young adult more and more with New Vegas and it made it for a much more unique experience, reactive experience, which is what you're looking for in RPGs because one thing I can say for both those games, Fallout 3 and New Vegas, but New Vegas definitely takes the cake on this one is the amount of times I've replayed these games. It's insane. Like Fallout 3, it's always that, ah, it just never gets old going back in that wasteland, even if the decisions I'm making aren't really that drastically different. There are multiple endings to a lot of quest lines, but let's be honest with ourselves. It's not as reactive as New Vegas. So with New Vegas going in for, oh my God, I don't even think I have enough fingers to count the amount of times I've gone back and replayed that game. Knowing that that a game is capable of that is equally overwhelming if you're new here and you've never played a Fallout game, a mainline Fallout game, uh, where Fallout 4, you can go through in one playthrough and you can see it all. You can see it all. Like all the storylines outside of one, like the Institute really, and the same for the most part. And you don't need to replay it multiple times. With New Vegas, with like the companions and the depth of them and their own storylines. And of course, the the main story and the multiple endings that are there and the choices you have there, plus the reputation system. It's one of those games that if you really fall in love with, it's going to treat you and reward you in the way that I feel KOTOR and KOTOR 2 do for me, which is, I don't remember this. This was awesome. Wh where was this in my sixth playthrough of the game? So yeah, it hits you pretty hard. One thing that I will say is, for me, New Vegas does need some level of modding. I just find its open world in a vanilla state pretty drab even to this day. I understand that technology and whatnot did not allow it to be a graphical showcase. It's not why I play these types of RPGs anyway. But for New Vegas, it was just an empty desert a lot of the times. And at least with like the ENB mods and stuff, you were able to see a, a a wasteland that was much more colorful. And it's one thing I really appreciate about Fallout 4 was like, I thought that was a very colorful video game. Honestly, it's the modding community as well. I mean, they're very active. Even to this day, there are huge mods being made 
for Fallout New Vegas. Fallout 4's modding community has picked up as well. We already know Skyrim's is huge, but New Vegas is, for a game that we still talk about 12 years later, it's actually insane how active that modding community is. And they provide some expansion DLC worthy content. A lot of it already existing. That's another great thing is the way that it's working now for people who are coming in and they don't know anything about modding, it's easier than ever through Nexus, especially for people like me who were never really good at modding. I'd always have these compatibility issues. They've ironed out a lot of those over the years. And also on top of that, just the individual expansions of content that feel lore friendly, that are lore friendly, that feel like true Fallout creations that are voice acted and have new weapons and pieces of armor. It's incredible because beyond the base game, New Vegas is this also blank slate to be built upon by its community. And so even if you want to not leave the initial Mojave Wasteland and just stay there, you can add tons of new weapons, tons of new bits of armor, new quest lines that are all within the Mojave. And that's what makes it also heavily replayable. Now, I'm definitely, I, I consider myself a gigantic Fallout fan. I'm not one of those people who just endlessly cycles into New Vegas and just keeps playing modded content. I have what I think many would call the, the purest point of view, which is I love mods. I support the hell out of mods. I've made a lot of content on mods. Uh, but, but for me personally, like I prefer the official content because I get more invested in that because for me, it's like I know it counts. So to me, it's more meaningful. And again, that's no disrespect to the modders, but we really have yet to see Bethesda Game Studios embrace its modding community the way I've seen like Sega say, hey, we're going to make Sonic Mania this full game or this is a really obscure reference, shout out to all of you who get this, but like there's this Geofront team that did a translation for, I think, Trails from Zero, this JRPG franchise, and NIS America took that translation and effectively is making all that stuff that they did official content. We have yet to see Bethesda do that. The closest they've got is Creation Club, and even that feels very limited. The best effort we've seen is probably the Skyrim Anniversary Edition. But otherwise, I mean, this game is just a great romp. It's a good time. The characters are hilarious. Some excellent writing and personalities here. Some legendary encounters. Some good vaults, by the way. Shout out to the vaults. I don't think I talk about that a lot on the channel because a lot of people know the mechanics in Fallout that make it click for me. Exploration, dialogue, choice, and consequence. But when it comes to like things that are exclusive to a Fallout game, it's absolutely the vaults that capture me. The twisted, dark stories. Just walking into an area knowing Everyone here is dead. Something went wrong. What did go wrong? That foregone conclusion and still making it interesting is to me fascinating. And each one is like its own experience, right? You'll, you'll sometimes have investigations in there. Sometimes it's just another dungeon romp. Sometimes it's like more you're hallucinating and seeing things. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. So to me, the vaults are, are the best part about Fallout. Some dark stories there. And if you're like a lore geek, you like reading terminals, notes, piecing together a whole world on top of the already excellent storytelling that's there, New Vegas does a really good job. So there's a lot here to love about this game. It's been fun going back to the Steam Deck. And I just wanted to shout it out in a random video here to try to shake things up a bit on the channel. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you're thinking about New Vegas. I think I already know a lot of your thoughts, but let me know what you're thinking down below. I'm excited to see. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and those links are in the description down below. With a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who, hey, let me have this studio space here where we have multiple rooms for recording things and we can capture a vibe per video type. Thank you to all of you. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.